Did Mac Miller foreshadow what was to come in his last album? Mac was undoubtedly one of the greatest artists of our generation. His work is a testimony to his talent, having created some of the best albums of the last decade. Today we're going to be looking at a story behind the creation of his magnum opus, Swimming, and dissecting what would become a final glimpse at Mac Miller's state of mind. Let's get into it. Picture this. It's 2018. TMZ had just reported that fine-ass Ariana and Mac have broken up after two years of being in a relationship. But as if losing his girl wasn't bad enough, after two months you're hearing that he's been arrested for driving under the influence and crashing his car into a telephone pole. To say this was one of the most turbulent times in the MC's life would be an understatement to say the least. But many of Mac's problems had started years before. He had struggled with fame ever since he had a taste of success. In many of his interviews, including one with Larry King, he alluded to his problems existing because he was famous. For example, he had only started rapping because he'd gotten high with his friends, so in a way, his music would always be linked to his drug problem and addiction. If there's anyone who would tell you fame isn't all it's cracked up to be, it was him. He had stayed sober in the two years he and Ariana were dating, but when he started working on the album, he would reportedly disappear for three or four days at a time. According to Ariana, the two broke up because Mac couldn't get his shit together. And that was a quote. Hinting that it was because Mac had started using drugs again. According to many of their friends, she had tried to be a rock for him, but this relationship had turned toxic for her, so they decided to go their separate ways. Fans blamed Ariana when the MC ended up crashing his Mercedes. That ain't fair. But to him, events like the car crash were the best thing that could have happened to him. It was a wake-up call, it grounded him, and it taught him that there were consequences to his actions. After everything that had happened, he needed to get his life together. Or as Ariana said, get his shit together. Most of the lyrics on the album allude to these themes, but for the project Mac wanted to release, he needed a little bit of help. And who else would be a perfect fit if not Rick Rubin? The two already had shared a history from back in 2015 when Rubin helped Mac stay sober after his tour. In a clip from Rubin's documentary series Shangri-La, Mac can be seen talking about his struggle to make the music authentically his. The goal, as Mac put it, was to just be as much himself as possible. In an interview with Zane Lowe, Mac talked about how when he started working on the album, he wasn't sure which direction to take it in. There was a lot of experimenting involved and a lot of changes were made. In fact, the album was initially supposed to be called Guidelines. But if making something earnest was the goal, then Miller succeeded phenomenally and Rubin's fingerprints were all over the project. The album is cut back and minimalistic. It's introspective, where he used to mug over his music relentlessly on previous projects. On Swimming, he mostly lets the beats breathe. The focus stays on whatever he has to say as he ponders on all his struggles and everything that has gone down in his life. But maybe we're getting a little too ahead of ourselves. Before exploring the content of the album, let's take a look at its cover art. Kristen Weber, the photographer who shot the cover, offered his input about the album cover on his Instagram story. According to him, there are a lot of ways to interpret the album cover and a lot of things that immediately catch the eye. There's the white space around Mac and something that sticks out from the rest of the artwork. In fact, two things are sticking out. We're talking about his feet, of course. The bottoms of his feet are covered in dirt. He's traveled for a long time and has been through a long journey to get to this point. But despite being surrounded by an empty void, he's still grounded. At first glance, the window on the cover makes it seem like he's on the plane. But actually, he's in a coffin. On top of that, his dirty feet give the impression that he's in the ground like he's been buried. This coffin theory reflects in the self-care music video. The pink suit is another interesting thing. According to Weber, he's dressed like the Gatsby from The Great Gatsby, reflecting a kinship Mac had felt with the character. As he says in Small Worlds, he never knew being rich and famous was so lonely. The album cover, in a way, incorporates elements from all of his other albums. The shape of the coffin he's in, for example, is very similar to that of a blue slide park. He's sitting just like on the watching movies with the sound off cover art. The white space around the image is the same as Good AM and the color scheme is reminiscent of the Divine Feminine. And that's the exact concept of the album, reflected in the lyrics as well. The album is a culmination of all Mac has been through, all the ups and downs of his career, his struggles with fame, and all the recent heartache he's had to deal with. 
Coming to the songs themselves, the best reflection of this concept is perhaps the song 2009. 2009 was the year Malcolm McCormick became Mac Miller. It set the tone for all his greatest achievements, but to Mac, it was also where his life had started going downhill. Back in 2009, he was just the white kid frat boy rapper in Wiz Khalifa's shadow. But he's come past all that. As he says, it's not 2009 anymore. While the album was written during a period of loss, on songs like 2009, there is a sense of positivity in Mac's attitude. Eric G., the producer of the track, revealed that the entire first half of the song was recorded in a pitch black booth right after he had played the beat for the first time, with Mac freestyling it. He mentioned that he didn't even want to release the track, but after showing it to his close friends, they were impressed by how raw and real it was and eventually convinced him. But while 2009 is considered the best track, the whole album is absolute fire, receiving positive reviews across the board. Through the 13 tracks, we follow Mac on his journey to self-acceptance. Lyrically, the album is a peek into the headspace of somebody who feels lost in internal conflict. It's about how he sometimes feels as though he's drowning in his issues. The album's opening track, Come Back to Earth, for example, expands on the album title's swimming metaphor, setting up a collection of songs about how he navigated turbulent waters and came out afloat. In the first single of the album, Self Care, through both the lyrics and the music video, Matt grapples with his mortality. He talks about his healing process from his breakup and the humiliation that follows it. In the tracks Hurt Feelings and Perfecto, he's rapping about trying to fix the relationship and fix himself, and how he's trying to figure it all out. These are tracks that have been widely speculated to be about Ariana and their relationship. In Perfecto, he claims that she put him back together, alluding to how Ariana helped him throughout their relationship. But the album doesn't end with him achieving the ultimatum Ariana had set for him. He was human, and sometimes that meant he couldn't figure himself out fully. And mostly, he's fine with that. In the self-care music video, when Mac is inside the coffin, he carves out memento mori on the lid. This is a Latin phrase, serving as a reminder that everyone must die. Some people have considered this to be a foreshadowing leading up to his death, but if someone were to put his final album under the microscope, they'd realize that Mac was on the road to fixing his issues. To many, the album is a constant reminder that although we struggle, there's beauty in that, and it's part of our lives as humans. Mac Miller may have passed away, but his magnum opus has immortalized him and become an integral part of his legacy. Swimming is a modern classic that brought the rapper's career full circle before he passed, and it remains one of the best albums of the past decade. That's all for now. What's your favorite Mac Miller album? Let us know in the comments below. And thanks for watching.